I believe we are live. Are we live? We are. We are live. Um, welcome to uh, another live stream from Stephen's tiny um, office. I will be joined by people um, in other spaces, so it'll be a little more interesting than what you're used to. Um, today, we're going to we're going to delve into a topic that I've. I've been involved in for years and years and years, and of course it's related to guitars, but a very, very special guitar um, and a very, very special human being by the name of Joey Taylor, who is the curator and the creator and the brain behind Voyager and the Six String Nation and Joey Taylor. Right That's a time. lovely introduction. Thank you. So Great to see you. You too. Uh, you may know Joey from way back. Uh, he had a, a radio show called Global Village, which I used to listen to long before I met you. And then um, one day, I don't even remember how we met. Do you remember how we met? It was There was multiple occasions because I was a, a coordinator, a, pro, a production coordinator at Harborfront Center. And oh, you played multiple, right. multiple, multiple gigs there. Right, right, right. And I would have been your guy. I would have been the guy setting up the show. Yeah. So what I remember with this this project that we're going to be discussing, and um, there there the Voyager is in the corner on a stand. Yeah. This um, I remember you calling me up or emailing me. If it was email, it would have been in the days of dial up, which should have been a long time ago. Uh, but somehow we contact each other, and you asked me if I would come in to Toronto to be part of a sort of discussion group to discuss this this guitar. So I'm gonna let you run with this topic. I'll, I'll ask you questions and obviously we'll go back and forth, but this is your baby. So tell us about how we, we the, tell us about the early days of this discussion and we'll, we'll see how we can get into the topic. Well, all right. Well, and it's good that we actually started at Harborfront Center because that's really where the story starts as well. Because it was 1995, and I was working as a production coordinator there, and I did all kinds of events, concerts, and lectures, and parties, and uh, fairs, and things like that. And, and among them uh, was a, a do-it-yourself fair. So it was, it was like uh, brew your own beer, uh, make your own yogurt, build your own patio deck, and so on. And this this was the the summer of 1995, and and I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you will remember that summer because it was right. the it was the summer of the referendum, right? Uh, leading up to the fall referendum in the province of Quebec, um, and and the truth is, I actually kind of understood the Quebec impulse because right. you know that's a part of the country that really really gets the connection between culture and nationhood in a way that. Um, maybe the rest of the country, with the arguable exception of Newfoundland, doesn't really have that discussion on a regular basis. So, uh, or in a, Alberta might be having it more. more <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for those for those who don't who are outside of the country and don't understand, the referendum was whether Quebec was going to separate from the rest of Canada. That's so right. That was a fairly pivotal moment in our history in '95. Exactly. Yeah. And it was a fair question. The 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 problem was that as the discussion began to grow in the media and in, in, in the political arena, it really, it, it all came, the, the whole discussion got guided into red versus blue, Quebec versus Ottawa, uh, French yeah. versus English, and, and disregarded the fact that there are French communities all across Canada, uh, Francophone communities all across Canada, and that there are other visions of what Canada is and other uh, stakeholders, where was the voice of indigenous people in that conversation? Where right. was the voice of newcomers in that conversation? Right. All the people who have invested in a sense of what, what the country is weren't included in that conversation so that it really devolved to a this this thing. And, and for me, the issue is that you're kind of stuck with um, these stock images that you see on the screen. Are you are you seeing these on the screen? No, I don't think we've started bringing them up yet. But oh. you mean sort of the classic sort of Canada is here. We go, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. Donuts, yeah. beer, hockey, yeah. Mounties. Yeah, maple syrup. Yeah. These are <laughs> these are the cliches of Canadian identity. Yeah. And and it's not that I I reject these or I have anything against them. They're fine. It's just that we are so much more than yeah. that. We're more diverse. We're more interesting. 
So there it is, 1995, summer at Harbor Front, and one of the events I coordinate is this do-it-yourself fair with the yogurt and beer and patio deck people. And among them is the guitar maker from Ontario named George Rosani, who was the build your own guitar guy. And uh, uh -huh. so he, I talked to he he at the time was trying to make a guitar just using wood from his property, and I thought that was kind of a quietly yeah I remember I I knew I knew George and I remember discussing this this concept with him of of making guitars out of non traditional woods and and yeah. sort of uh, building stuff close to home yeah. Exactly. So, so I thought, well, this was a really interesting idea. So I, I said to him originally, well, you know, do you think you could build a guitar using something from every province and territory? And then we would have this kind of occasion to open a, a discussion. But, but to be honest, I, I only thought that it would be like some vaguely representative piece right. from each province and territory. Right. Um, but in fact, it was a, and he said, oh yeah, I'd love to give that a try. And so I, said about you know i instituted the project and started talking to people and among the first people i talked to i think uh, uh you know curtis johnny yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so curtis johnny uh was uh, i got I, I had a meeting with him and elaine bombery and elaine um and johnny said you know i think you should get something from a residential school uh, because then this would be a really powerful yeah. guitar. Yeah. And th this hadn't occurred to me that we could use something that had been something else before. Uh, and so that changed the tone of everything because then I went back to George and I said, Ken, so can you weren't thinking, that? you were thinking just like pieces of raw material from yeah. each province. Okay. Exactly. Okay. 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 And he okay. was, he was the one who suggested investing, you know, import and story and gravity into these pieces. <sighs> So then I go back to George and I say, can you do that? Can you use repurposed material? And he said, well, actually, that's better for me because then I don't have to spend any time curing the wood. It's already done. Yeah. And that changed everything. And Jennifer, if you could put the, the slide up again, because this <laughs> here's where the big reveal comes, uh, because that's that's when I started collecting the pieces that you see here. OK, so now this so is some of these are nothing. This is going to be pretty. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, we have a time, a bit of a time lag, so just bear with no me. Worries. But if if people are looking at this and they're thinking, well, this is a very, you know, it's a small screen to begin with. Now, how those little pieces, all of this stuff, you can see on your Instagram feed, and Jennifer is going to put um your Instagram coordinates there. This story that we're going to talk about is way more than sixty minutes. And each of these little pieces that has gone into this instrument has a huge backstory. And that, what we're going to do is talk about some of these pieces. But if you're kind of looking at it and getting overwhelmed already, you can peruse this at, at your will. And there's lots and lots of information on the sixstringnation.com and Joey's um, Instagram feed. So. Yeah, okay. I'll I'll highlight some of these, and and you know some of these things are really really famous, and but you know a lot of them are just construction scrap, but with stories to tell, you know, like stuff. So um, that was that was the idea. They all became this guitar. Uh, this guitar, by the way, uh, we nicknamed Voyageur in two thousand and eight. Voyageur was the suggestion. We we did a little survey in our first year out. What should we nickname? Like Trigger or Lucille? Uh, it needed a nickname, and it was Lieutenant Colonel Susan Beharial of the Canadian Armed Forces who suggested the name Voyageur. Uh, so when we when we you know went with the name, we did the reveal at the Festival de Voyageur in Winnipeg in February. Uh huh. I just lost you there, Joey. So all I'm seeing right now is the um, the actual uh, voyageur and the picture um, of the governor general, but I'm not seeing you anymore. I wonder if you should be logging back in so that we can see you. Um, what I can tell you, <laughs> this is very silly, but this T-shirt and this logo, which you can see so beautifully on the guitar, this is what, oh, there he is. He's back. Yeah, this this yeah. logo was what initially what drew me in because That's I thought right. it was such a beautiful idea. So it's the, it's basically six strings when they vibrate. And if you were able to capture the different vibrations of the strings, that's what you get. So when you first asked me to get involved, there was talk of a 
a satin tour jacket with this on the back. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to yeah. be involved because uh, I love the logo and the name, Six the, String Nation. The most I was able to muster was a guitar pick and a t-shirt. But let's <laughs> let's give a shout out while we're at it to Darren Wilson who uh, uh -huh. designed that logo. It's a anyway, fantastic yeah. logo. Yeah. Well, anyway, you. so continue your story. All right. Well, so so let's let's start uh, in Nova Scotia because you 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 know you you were asking yeah. you know where, where does the whole thing begin? And and the first piece that we got, I believe, uh, was from the deck of the Blue Nose Two. And uh, I think, if I recall correctly, th th this one was kind of a, an easy get, believe it or not, because. Uh, a the um, the Blue Nose was under reconstruction at the time. It was like a fifty million dollar rebuild of the yeah, Blue Nose Two. I remember. And it. I don't know if people know, but Blue Nose Two is actually built from, or at least partly from, wood that they had on hand to repair a Blue Nose One with. Uh, ah. It sank off the coast of Haiti in the seventies, uh, and they they used the the original plans to rebuild Number Two. Now, Vice Admiral Duncan Miller just happened to be doing a guitar building course with George at the time. So it was a easy conduit to get the piece of the blue nose uh, and some other pieces from, from Nova Scotia. And in, this went into uh, the neck and the neck block. I'm just looking at the little diagram. Yeah. On so you got the top block and the end block and yeah. also those two, uh, uh, two parts of the neck laminate. Uh, can, you, can I interrupt you and just, yeah. can you bring that guitar that's sitting behind you? Yeah. 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 Up? Closer to the the camera, and and we'll. There's going to be a, there are a lot of pictures of it as you'll see as we progress. But just so you know, there's this this real beautiful instrument, um, and so there's Voyageur. There is the instrument, which is basically a living museum of Canadian. Bear in mind that I do not play guitar, so <laughs> don't ask me to you know do anything. Uh, although I, I've been practicing my reckless Eric, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Reckless Eric, perfect. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So. So you'll, you know, it is a it is a living, breathing, pretty deep bodied, dreadnought style guitar, and it, it's a Martin. It's a Martin Triple O. Martin Triple O. Okay. Yeah. If everything is made. It, 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 the whole thing is made entirely from found, donated uh, pieces of Canadiana. So yeah. the first piece came from the Blue Nose. Um, that was uh, out in the East Coast. Did you? Is that the only piece from the East Coast? No, and in fact, there's I think was it five from Nova Scotia in total. Okay. Um, but you know what's interesting about this? We talk about you know I showed you that slide that with the cliches of Canada, and frankly, uh, you know the Blue Nose is one of them, <laughs> right? Yeah, like right. Of course. It, 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 you know, it's on the dime, or at least it's been agreed that it's on the dime. Um, and the whole point of this project, as I said back at the top, was was to invite new voices, uh, invite those who are not always included in the picture that we try to paint. So uh, I call it, uh, you know, expanding the palette of colors we use to paint the picture of Canada. And and so one of the ones in my research that I came up with, and frankly, there's a there's a, a Harper Front connection with this too. Uh, this piece too is uh, Delvina Bernard uh, from Nova Scotia. Uh, she's on the board of Oxfam Canada now, and she runs the African Heritage uh, Center in Dartmouth. And um, she talked about the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children, uh, where her father actually uh, went to school. This was an orphanage set up by the first black lawyer uh, in Nova Scotia. Uh, it had a terrible, terrible history that was uh, only recently addressed by the premier of Nova Scotia in 2014, the premier McNeil. Um, and a settlement was paid for terrible abuses at that facility uh, over many, many decades. Um, but it was a, it was a recognition of the, of this incredibly long standing African Canadian community in Nova Scotia. Um, and yet when you think of Nova Scotia, you know, mostly you think of, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the blue yeah. nose and yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fiddly diddly stuff. That's right. I know when I lived out there, um, it was it was. Uh, I went to Africville. What's there? I mean, it's it's pretty it's much left. gone yeah, because yeah. they 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 moved that whole thing to build that bridge. But there was very much still a, a a very strong black community there. But it was still really separate, and it was bizarre. I never really 
could get my finger on it. And um, coming from Ontario and from BC, uh, I just, you know, it just felt weird to me. Um, and so I ended up connecting with some of the people in the black community out there. But um, uh, you know what? This is a good, it's probably a good time to play a tune. And this is a good, this is a very, very good connection because <clears throat> this tune that I want to play, I wrote with a pretty prominent member of the black community out there, a woman named, a young woman named Rainey Smith. And Rainey and I were brought together by Studio H and CBC Halifax to uh, to write a song together to basically celebrate the life of Nelson Mandela. This was when Nelson Mandela was was very ill and and all the news agencies around the world were doing what they do, which is start to gather together information to to create an obituary. It's you know it's a bit ghoulish, but they have to sort of do it. And uh, of course, <laughs> Nelson Mandela is as tough as a boiled owl, and that guy lived for a long time. And we wrote this song, we recorded it, but it never really saw the light of day in the way that that I had envisioned. So um, I've ended up recording it again with Blackie and the Rodeo Kings and whatever. And and um, Rini Smith is, I think, sixth or seventh generation gospel singing, Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia, uh, black family, very, very, very um, incredible musicians. All of them. Her brother is an amazing drummer. Rini's a beautiful, beautiful singer, and uh, well, we wrote this tune together. What's that? Oh, you're gone. I have a walk. Long way to freedom. I tried not to stumble and fall down in the road. And I discovered that the secret of climbing these great hills is there's always one more hill to go. I have taken the time to stop and rest a while. Looking back on the valley below But I dare not linger For my long walk isn't over So many miles still to go Just a sinner who keeps on trying. So I kept my spirit pointed toward the sun. And freedom isn't freedom if it's only for yourself. The chains on me are the chains on everyone. So I let my light shine through the shadows of the night. From a tiny room behind the prison wall The greatest glory in living Doesn't lie in never falling But in rising every time we fall Spirit pointed toward the sun. I have a walk a long way to freedom, and it seemed impossible until it was done. It seemed impossible, impossible. Impossible until it was done. (laughs) 
Oh, so great. I forgot to say that when we were when when I'm playing, because I'm gonna play some songs during this. Um, but when we're playing, we're gonna run photographs of of people because one of the great things that you did and have and continue to do is is um you show up at festivals and the like with the Voyager and uh, and this great photographer. I'm not sure if you use the same photographer every time, but yep. um, there have been this great a photo booth. Yeah, so this is something we started right, right on day one um, is using the uh, – knowing that people would want to get close and – and we figured a great way to involve people in the project was to, to do portraits. So Doug Nicholson is, is a dear friend from high school uh, who's a great photographer. And so we conceived this little uh, portable photo arrangement and it's uh, gone through some changes over time. But uh, so you'll, you'll see some subtle variations in the photos, but we've now done 150,000 portraits of 15,000 different people <laughs> wow. uh, holding this guitar in every province and territory of Canada and a bunch in Italy on our trip to the Un Paese a Secorde festival in Piemonte as well. Really? And I, I wanted to point out as well, but what was really nice, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I saw the comment that, uh, you know, people are going to recognize people as they see these yeah. photos. Oh, yeah. Some of them because they're well-known people and others because they're friends. <laughs> so many people have had their portraits taken. Uh, but there's many other kind of connections that get made. And, and one of them, of course, is Lawrence Hill, um, yeah. you know, thinking about the African-Canadian community and yeah. how the Book of Negroes really winds up there. That's that's where that settlement um, uh, happened in in Nova Scotia. Uh, and then the other connection uh, is that uh, we did a big project through the Luminato Festival with the uh, Nelson Mandela Park Public School in Toronto in Regent Park. And the kids there made me this collage uh, that includes uh, materials from all the jerseys of all the schools in Regent Park. And uh, that's now uh, adorning the pillow for the headstock. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, as we play, there'll be lots of chance to look at uh, some of these incredible portraits and whatnot. So, okay, let's get into it. Um, we've we started on the East Coast with the first piece, the first couple of pieces, and now let's let's do the trip. Let's let, let me take you across. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. you know, we don't have time to talk about all the pieces and so on. But what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll take you through um, and show you the pieces from each province and territory and. If you want to follow up, go to the Instagram uh, feed because uh, there I've been doing a year-long project to kind of um, uh, put up all these different little cards and go through the map of the guitar as we go, showing you where everything goes. Um, so that'll uh, you can learn a lot more and you can dig back through. But just for an example, uh, from uh, one of the pieces from Newfoundland is a piece from the lighthouse at Cape Race, uh, which is where the Titanic signal uh, wow. was received. And, uh, you know, I, I have to say there's a line in the longest road uh, where you say where the sea turns from emerald to gray. Yeah, And I have this incredible memory when we went out to get this piece from Dave uh -huh. Myrick, uh, whose family still runs the lighthouse today. Uh, and, and it was a Myrick who was running it when, when the Titanic signal came in, we went out, we, we didn't know the weather was not good. You couldn't drive out. We couldn't helicopter out. I couldn't afford a helicopter out, but uh, some local <laughs> guys in Trapassi put us on the back of their ATVs. And we went along this incredible cliffside ride to the lighthouse and and it was like a moonscape on the left and on uh, the right there was that emerald yeah, yeah. there's no color like it right it's just yeah. extraordinary with these giant puffins or whatever they were sitting on top of it are yeah. just an amazing experience um uh, moving on to uh to PEI, we've got five pieces from that tiny province, including JR's Bar uh, in Charlottetown, where Stop and Tom and Ann Murray got started. Uh, but also the favorite piece that I like to talk about, Joe LeBobe's Championship Oyster Shucking Knife from uh, from the uh, Tyne Valley, uh, from the Lennox Island First Nation. Uh, he was Micmac. Uh, he was a, uh, an oyster shucking champion for a couple of years and a, a local hero in all kinds of ways. Uh, so huh. his, his story is a beautiful and one. And where is that, where does that uh, feature in the guitar it's the uh seat for the strap post kind of in oh, okay, the, end okay. of the guitar yeah uh from new brunswick the machot which was a french frigate scuttled in the restigouche river uh, in 1760 during the seven years war uh it was being supplied by the mi'kmaq uh, the local mi'kmaq uh and it was they were trying to prevent the english from getting 
down the river towards Quebec City. And uh, so they scuttled the boat, uh, and they only recovered this piece uh, in the 1970s when they were excavating for a mill site. Now, the neat thing about it is when you think about what's going to be the bridge of a guitar, you, you want ebony, right? Yeah. Well, wood is actually red oak, but it's got 200 years of river mud in it, and uh, so it almost looks like ebony when you, when you huh. pull it out. And it's uh, well seasoned. Quebec, of course, uh, well seasoned, yes. Yeah. Uh, lots of pieces of Quebec, uh, the uh, um, Montreal form Pierre Trudeau's canoe paddle from the Teatro Capitol in Quebec City. Have you ever played there? No. The Teatro oh. Capitol? I would oh, love maybe, to You know there. what? Actually, I may... Uh, no, I don't know. I don't Beautiful know. Beautiful Beaux-Arts uh, building. Just, no, uh, I definitely have not. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of the places I played in Quebec yeah, City. That's um, about it. <laughs> but maybe the highlight is is uh, Rocket Richard Stanley Covering from 1956. Uh, we got a little bit of gold. My friend Dave Traherne uh, uh, bought that ring at auction in 2004, and gave me uh, gave me the chance to have a jeweler at the at the craft studio at Harborfront cut off a little bit of gold that's now right in the middle of the ninth fret. Brilliant. Ontario, of course, the most populous uh, province, so it's kind of, and I'm from here, so it is perhaps overweighted uh, with uh, with material. There's 23 pieces between, uh, you'll find as you watch the thing unfold on Instagram or elsewhere, uh, that it, this includes pieces in the, in the case and on the strap as well that have been mounted since the guitar's debut. Um, so there's a total of 23, but, um, uh, among my favorites is the uh, Hoito restaurant in Thunder Bay. Yeah, you yeah, must have yeah. been there, right? Oh uh, yeah, many times. Finnish restaurant. These uh, the the panukaku pancakes, and it's yeah. been run as a cooperative uh, since it opened. Canada's longest continually operating restaurant uh, in Thunder Bay. There, uh, I did not know that. That's yeah. really great. That's so we cool. got the soup paddle. That's a couple of side struts there. Seat from Massey Hall, currently under renovation, and yeah, and, uh, so. I'll look forward to the next time I set foot, some of the best shows I've ever seen in my Me life. Too, yeah. there. That's now the headstock of the guitar. Uh, and then one of the more recent additions, uh, we got some suit from each of Gord Downey's, uh, some leather, the colored leather from each of seven of Gord Downey's suits from the final tour, some shoe leather and some felt from the hat and feather from the hat. Uh, all by from Jeff Churchill, who did the shoes, uh, uh, Karen Ruiz, who did the hats, and Izzy Camilleri, who did the suits. Uh, those came to me th through a teacher uh, in uh, Kitchener-Waterloo. So this is ongoing. This is still building. Well, there's tiny little bits of real estate on the strap and in the case. Uh, so we are very judiciously looking for great stories to tell, and, and how could you leave... I yeah. mean, I didn't actually want to include any musicians in this project because I figured musicians' role would be to bring it to life, and that you could never satisfy you'd you'd, you'd annoy somebody by not including some their favorite artist, right? <laughs> so I, I kind of tried to keep musicians out, but I, but th this was kind of an exception. Uh, that that year, that last year of his life was such a a courageous. Uh, yeah. act and and i thought that uh, warranted some recognition so uh, uh whatever tiny bit i can offer but there it is it's now mounted on the front of the strap and then of course right into the case uh chris hatfield's mission patch uh we had actually Brilliant. talked about him taking the guitar on his uh mission to the space station the the catch was that if he was going to have it with him, which he liked the idea of, it would have to go up before him on the very last U.S. shuttle mission, and there was no room to bring it back on a Soyuz capsule. So he yeah. said, you know, if you're prepared to let it go for all time, I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah. instead, we got together, he played, and he gave me his mission patch. So that was pretty cool. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, from wow. Nunavut, a few pieces from Nunavut. Uh, the great story behind the uh, walrus tusk, uh, which is from Kengliktunik, uh, is that they were the original bridge pins, six walrus tusk bridge pins. They were a little bit unstable. And so sometimes they would pop out. And we were doing a show at a place I'm sure you've played many, many times, the Townhouse in Sudbury, a uh, very famous, legendary <laughs> yeah. venue. Yeah. And I can't remember who was playing it at the time, uh, and, uh, possibly Robert Paquette, and the, the it popped out. And people were dancing, and it got kicked under the stage. So somewhere under the stage uh, wow. at the Townhouse <laughs> Tavern is a walrus tusk 
bridge pin from the six string nation guitar huh. uh manitoba where the strap was made of course by levy leather but uh, uh the incredible piece of the spalted oak which forms the back and sides and part of the neck, neck laminate it occupies the most real estate winnipeggers are very proud of that uh in the guitar uh but also this uh, just on the on the seventh fret this little lucky stone from gimli manitoba that represents the icelandic community there uh and uh so i'm i'm i feel very fortunate that uh that people like so Manitoba it's inset into the the guitar. neck into the yeah it's right there on the seventh fret it's in inlaid yeah wow on the seventh fret uh saskatchewan uh just a few pieces i've been trying to get extra like i wanted to get something from sandra schmerler i've come up uh nothing with that um we did get uh, some material from the grain elevator in Verigan, Saskatchewan, that was built by the Dukabor uh, community there. This is a Russian pacifist sect that came to Canada yeah. on a grant from Leo Tolstoy. Um, what was so amazing, I mean, I wanted to put a grain elevator in anyway because, you know, this this is a disappearing feature of the Canadian yeah. prairie uh, as more and more family farms give way to factory farms. Uh, and here's this grain elevator still standing straight as an arrow uh the Dukabor community there which is aging out uh incredibly everyone's moving to the city invited us out to their heritage fair uh they made special little enamel pins for us on the day that was beautiful wow. uh but everyone came out and had their portrait taken so it was a really really special day fantastic uh alberta uh from the blood tribe wing gretzky's hockey stick uh, uh, from the uh, princess patricia canadian light infantry that comes up a lot and john ware uh the first black cowboy in alberta uh, kind of a legendary figure um great play about him by cheryl fago and in a in a similar situation to you with renee uh or Rini, sorry um uh uh, Chris Demeanor uh, ended up writing, co-writing uh, music for the play, Cheryl Fago's play about John Ware, and it's kind of debunking some of the myths ar around him. But certainly some of the uh, some of the uh, activities that you'll see, events that you'll see at the Calgary Stampede were sort of mastered by him and created by him. Uh, Northwest Territories, we've got stuff from uh, uh, Sonny uh, McDonald, the great uh, Dene Carver, um, uh, William Greenland, a Gwich'in elder from uh, the Yellow Knife gave me a feather to go in the, uh, the case. And the Wildcat Cafe is in there. So many people that I know, that I, anywhere I go, I say, has anyone been to the Wildcat? Always a hand goes up. It's kind of extraordinary. Um, uh, from the Yukon, a bunch of pieces, including Jack London's cabin, uh, the Yukon Rose, an old uh, river vessel, um, and then this Martin Hyde stretcher uh, that was donated by these amazing brothers. Well, actually, it was donated by JJ, the guy that you see on the left in that little uh, picture, if you can see it. Yeah. Uh, this is these were like a, they were a mixed European and and indigenous uh, family, fourteen kids, something like that, trappers. But JJ became became a really renowned photographer kind of documenting life on the trap lines um and and really devoted his later life to that he died just a few years ago but when we were doing this portrait of the two brothers we got patrick standing or patrick seated and jj standing and uh, as we're doing the picture uh patrick says i think that was one of my martin hyde stretchers <laughs> <laughs> So that was pretty funny. Uh, and then we get to uh, BC, of course, Nancy Green Ski and Jade from Dee's Lake. Uh, we'll talk about the Golden Spruce in a minute. Uh, Jack Upple, an extraordinary story. This is now mounted on the strap of the Vancouver Asahi. There's now a, a heritage minute about this team that was founded in 1914. Uh, Japanese Canadian baseball team not allowed to play against white teams, but eventually became the hot ticket in Vancouver. Um, and when the uh, the internment happened and the the japanese were dispersed across the country or to camps around bc uh, the team couldn't survive but one of their jerseys wound up in the collection of the japanese canadian cultural center and um and uh they let me take a little piece off the right uh, back of the right sleeve so that's now mounted on the the front of the strap and then of course we we wind up in your former and current hometown of Victoria yeah. uh, with Fantan Alley, part of the original gate to uh, Fantan Alley, uh, the sort of first Chinatown in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a record of, of how poorly the Chinese were treated uh, because women weren't allowed. So it was only uh, 
Chinese men and and they had nothing to do in their off time. So there's a lot of gambling and uh, opium being smoked and so on. And they were constantly being busted by the cops. And so this gate, this piece of wood was part of the gate. It was kind of an early warning system. If a raid was coming, uh, they would hear the gate rattling and, uh, wow. And they would disperse as best they could. Amazing. So yeah. So that brings us to Victoria. You rattled through all of that. <laughs> and there, that was, I think that picture was taken at Summerfolk? No. No, that was taken at Home County in London. Home County, right, right. Yeah. Um, so how did you go about getting, I mean, every single piece? You made phone calls. You had friends who had friends. Did you have pieces in mind? Like, how did all this come into that? Well, so, you know, so I did some pieces I had in mind because I, I thought about it like uh, the anchors in the mall, right? You need the you need the pieces that everyone's going to recognize. So you get your Paul Paul Henderson's hockey stick and uh, the Blue Nose yeah. 2 and yeah. so on, and pieces that are highly recognizable. But then along the way, I had a, a bunch of researchers uh, working with me, uh, and they would uncover. I would say, look, I really want to, is there something from this community that, that's really compelling and uh, people go out and make connections. And that's how we ended up with uh, um, um, the chapel in, in the Eastern townships uh, that was built by slaves, uh, Canadian slaves. People like to think there weren't Canadian slaves, but these were brought over by loyalists from Vermont. Um, stories like that, that it's like, well, this, this is a story that, that should be part of the, the bigger story. And so then it was a matter of getting in touch with those people. And frankly, once you had, Pierre Trudeau's canoe paddle and the blue nose and Paul Henderson's hockey stick, it was easier to talk to people about what it is you're trying to do. They're like, Oh, okay. I, you know, I get it. Yeah. I'd love to be part of that story. So yeah. That's how wow. it happened. Okay. Um, so I know that there's a very key part of the guitar that we're going to get to, but um, I feel like I should play another tune. And it's um, one of the things that, that I'm amazed and, and I love about the instrument, the Voyager is how it kind of, it's a living embodiment of, in some ways, a, a document of our country in a way that the, the early images that you showed are not. And in that it's, this is a very diverse country with a lot of different ethnic people living here. And um, the guitar really, it really um, shows that. So this tune, which I'll play. Um, <laughs> put the capo on then I didn't tune it which I should have I'm gonna play a tune called emigrant song and it's well it's pretty self-explanatory and you'll get to watch pictures of people playing that beautiful instrument so you can just fade me out <laughs> For my country, it doesn't want me, and my faith is on its knees. I will follow every highway through the street lights and the dawn, and find the city where someone needs me. Place to call my own on Sunday night. I was in Dublin, it was the last day of the year. Walking through a concrete wasteland, all that ancient. Hope and fear. And there was nothing left to reach for to pull myself out of the fray. I got my ticket now. I am leaving, so don't watch me walk away. i 
fare thee well, my fickle homeland. I always loved you from the first. Fare thee well, beautiful country, even when you're at your worst. When the rain falls in Vancouver, something makes me look away. Like every immigrant, I still love you, and that is why I cannot stay. When the rain falls in Vancouver, something makes me look away. Like every immigrant, I still love you, and that is why I cannot stay. Like every immigrant, I still love you. That is why I cannot stay. The immigrant song. That's amazing. Thank you. You know, I, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, no, no. It's it just it's lovely. It was so beautiful and timely and just yeah, gorgeous. It's uh, it's a tune I wrote with Andy White. And uh, I remember saying to him that I had this idea for a song, which started with "Fare Thee Well," and he kind of rolled his eyes. <laughs> I was like, "No, man, come on, let's let's take that old cliche yeah. and take see it if we back. Can, yeah, yeah, go Absolutely. somewhere with it." So, yeah, so yeah. so we're out on the west coast, and we've got as far as as Victoria is that as far west as we go. We actually go quite a bit further, and okay. to me, it's for the most extraordinary story of the whole thing and that's the story of this tree wow. uh, the golden spruce so clearly this, this is something wrong with it <laughs> this is a tree with no chlorophyll in its needles uh it should have shouldn't have survived but it it did it's the subject of that great book by john valiant uh and it was a true a tree that was sacred to the haida uh people known as as kid kias uh the golden spruce and it was cut down by this madman in 1997 uh, who thought he was making a great gesture that would be uh, appreciated by the Haida people, but instead it was a murder, you know, of someone in their community. Uh, and they had vowed at that point never to touch this tree again. But uh, Dr. David Suzuki kind of hooked me up with the community uh, on Haida Gwaii, and we had an 18 month uh, dialogue uh, that included a lot of back and forth, a lot of community meetings on their part and uh, coming back to me with questions. And eventually they said, well, we, th we, we think this is okay in principle that you want to take part of this for this project, uh, but we want to meet you first. And uh, although I had no money, <laughs> why, I, I thought this isn't going to be the only chance. And so I flew a bunch of people out, including the guitar maker. And, and uh, we went out there with no promise of anything. Uh, got to know people in the community, and eventually they said, "Well, we think we can we can do this." Uh, now, at that point, they didn't know if there's going to be anything left of this tree at all. We hiked into that forest; nobody had seen it for a while. Uh, we hiked in together about 45 minutes, uh, crossed the Yakun River, and uh, what we found on the other side was that it had fallen in such a way that some of the upper branches you can see here yeah. kind of acted like legs. So that kept it off the ground a little bit. So that kept some of the moisture out. I mean, nine years on the ground in a rainforest is kind of a long time, but uh, it, it managed. And uh, uh, Leo Gagnon, the Haida carver who uh, agreed to do the cut, he went up and down the length of that tree, uh, figuring out the best place, found a spot about two thirds of the way up. Uh, and together we became the first people to cut into this tree since it was felled in 1997. Wow. It was, uh, here I go. I knew I was oh, going to yeah, lose it Yeah, 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 man. Of yeah. course. So yes, what, just a, what a great honor for you. And incredible. For, like amazing, amazing. I mean, this is a community that had every reason not to want to participate in something that was ostensibly about Canada. This is a, a part of the country that's been 
been treated very poorly by Canada in many ways. Um, and and yet they made this extraordinary gift. Like, look at wow. that. This piece was perfect, just perfect. Yeah. So we we took it straight from there. I uh, Leo made me carry it. <laughs> he, he said, "It's yours now. You got to carry it out of here." <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it was a big uh, chunk of wood. It was a big wow. chunk of wood. Uh, we got that over to Port Clements and went to a, a mill where we planed off a couple pieces just like this. Uh, and this, uh, as you know, and as I hope everyone at this point will appreciate, is now uh, the top of the guitar. So it's the sounding board of the guitar. It's the voice of the guitar. This the, this piece is yeah. that's on your guitar. That's what it is. It's wow. the face, the face, and the voice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a remarkable gift, a remarkable story, um, and I and I, I'm so lucky that we got to go back to Haida Gwaii in 2008 to the Edge of the World <sighs> Festival. Fantastic. And, and so many people from the community came out because it had, had such a negative connotation, such a horrible story for so long. But now there was this new chapter kind of written for right. it. And, and so people came out and really embraced it, uh, including uh, this guy, Mo Ingram, who was also described to us as a as a cousin of the spirit of the tree and Gujao, who at the time was the president of the council of the Haida nation. Uh, we're still in touch, uh, an amazing human being, uh, honored to know him. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, well honored by that too. Uh, yeah. Great for me in the project. And we, I did get to hook up with John Valiant who wrote the book, um, uh, at a, at an event in Hart at Hart house in Toronto a number of years ago. So he's a guitar player too, handily. Wow. So um, that's, I'm just that that I'm. It's a remarkable story. I I remember hearing about the, the the golden spruce being cut down and what a what a dark chapter that was. And um, yeah, what a way to to pull something out. I'm just amazed that they were generous enough to want to to give back <laughs> after you yeah. know everything. So yeah. okay, so we're kind of, we're getting pushed into the, the last part of the story, which is, you want to tell this part? Because the pictures are already telling it, whether you want to or not. I know. I, I, unfortunately, I, I, I didn't leave myself a, an out there. I, I hit the button too soon. Well, you know, when we first spoke, I mean, I had, I had seen, um, I had seen you perform a number of times at Harborfront, and, and The Longest Road always stirred me. But more importantly, I think I, I watched it stir the crowds i watch it stir audiences there's something uh, and although it's a it's a song of, that's got loss in it and it's got reflection and it's it talks about traveling out of canada it it has this i was thinking about this today it's it's amazing to me the song has this real sweep right that when you go into that chorus and that momentum starts to chug you mm -hmm. can hear those train wheels going right and then there's a stop and you stop in winnipeg and your stepfather looks for Mounties, and yeah. you take these Polaroids, and it's like it, it it goes from this grand thing to this really specific and tiny thing, and which I think great songwriting and great storytelling does. It it gives you a sense of scope and sweep, uh, but then makes it really really personal and profound. And you and likewise, you know, you you start the song in Gastown in Vancouver, and and you travel east on that yeah. trip you took to Montreal. And, and yeah, to the docks of Montreal, and uh, that that journey uh, is one that you so many people, either in reverse or or in that direction, try to do to kind of encapsulate what Canada means. It's it's something people feel compelled to do. Um, the other th the other thing about the longest road that I have to say, you've got that line in there. Uh, what is it about cultivated smiles? Yeah. Um, and it's funny because, you know, as we look at these portraits, uh, which are all by my photographer, Doug Nicholson, you know, what's amazing about them is that I think people expect, because they line up, right? People line up at festivals and conferences and whatever to, to get these pictures. And I think they think it's going to be one of those Hello Magazine things where they, you know, they get handed a guitar and they stand there. So the first shot is always the cultivated smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but we say oh no 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 just relax we're, we're going to take a bunch and we'll we'll take ten or twenty or thirty pictures to people however long it takes for them to get comfortable and what I find so extraordinary is that people reveal themselves uh, their their self comes out yeah and you see these expressions and whether it's in 
in an action that that they're making or the clothes that they're wearing, just the way they're carrying themselves, the expression on their face, their preoccupation, their, or, or the person that they're with sometimes, you know, the gestures that they make, these are, are also uncultivated. And, and I, uh, I, I love that about these photos. I, I could watch them forever. Yeah, but this, yeah, this well, song, this song, like, them, oh, sorry. That's I was okay. gonna, go ahead. I was gonna say the, 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 the amazing, the other amazing thing about The Longest Road was, you know, I said to you, like way before the guitar was even on the bench, uh, I said, I, I want The Longest Road to be the first song sung on this guitar. And you were like, oh, sure, it sounds great. Like, and then, and then you <laughs> waited 11 years, as did I, for this to happen. And what was really cool was that I remember very, very specifically sitting in an office above uh, Darcy McHugh's on Spark Street in Ottawa, where the National Capital Commission office was. And people played, uh, and, and, I, and I sent all the people from the National Capital Commission this song and was crossing my fingers. Gosh, I hope they like it. I hope they say yes, because this is my dream. And they all were like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then they get they called you and Blackie who, who you know yeah. at the whole yeah. at the time and and you all came out. Yeah, because it's funny because there's I don't know how you you can you can verify how many people claim to have played the guitar for the first time and I can legitimately claim that I played it the first time on the steps of the legislature <laughs> on Canada Day. But you know, so many people, of course, probably the first person who played it was was the builder. And and then maybe you, and then you know it sort of fans out. But it, we all we all have our moment because it's a very special thing. And I think that's one of the things that that all the people who get their photograph taken is, I mean, holding a guitar. Uh, uh, there there's something really magical about it, and that's what drew me to this instrument from the very beginning when I was a kid, a teenager. Was the way you can kind of hold on to them yeah. they have this heft and this they're, they're they're they feel good under your hands and to have that plus the crazy ride that you've just gone on where i was going like, stop 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 what about that, what about that? <laughs> so to have that as well be part of it it, it is a really a, a magical magical thing and i remember we talked about how there were all sorts of plans. You wanted to put a GPS unit in inside it and send it from province to province. And, you, you know, you'd give it to Lenny Gallant, who would hand it off to Susan Crow, who would hand it off to, you know, whoever. Right. And and uh, it would make its way across the country and you could track it online. And I keep thinking how much, I mean, not that we want to get into it too much, but how much money have you personally sunk into this? You like... Your whole life has gone into this. Yeah, and I never got any support, believe it or I not. I know you didn't, and it still <laughs> gets me, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, because anybody watching this, and this will be archived, by the way, on my YouTube channel, this should, should be this should be something that, that goes into schools. Um, this I just feel very strongly that it's 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 a very, very unique and special thing, but the story behind all the pieces is what our country is all about. It's the history of our country in, in a guitar, which is an amazing thing that you can hold it, that you can touch it, that it's not in a, in a glass case, you know, with back off written on it, you, you get to <laughs> hold it. Yeah. So I would encourage anybody who's watching this to, um, you can go to Joey's website. There's a beautiful, I don't, do you still have copies of the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can buy those from Indigo yeah. and Amazon. And I bought I bought the book and I also got the, the mint put out a coin in the shape of a guitar pick, which I was lucky enough to get one of those. But um, hopefully some of that money goes towards you so that you can continue taking this to schools. I, I love the idea of if there's anybody out there watching this who's got some coin, uh, like serious coin, the idea of creating some kind of a, uh, I don't know what it would be, some a trust fund or something so that you could pay your way, you know, pay for your airfare so you could fly to, to, to schools and universities and present this incredible thing. It's it's crazy, in my humble opinion, that CBC did not jump on this with both feet. I, I still don't understand how this has not become a major thing. It, it To me, the fact that I get to talk to you is so great, but you should be, uh, you know, you should be too busy for the likes of me. Uh, well, listen, I would always want you along for the ride, for sure. And I do go into schools, but like you say, it would be great to have someone uh, who would make it possible for me to say yes to the schools that couldn't afford it and the schools yeah. that can't afford to pay my way out, you know, flying and whenever that's possible again.
Yeah. But listen, I, I we we can't. I I, I got. I want to get to this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I play the song. I play the song happily and more importantly. <laughs> I think that there's probably a bunch of pictures taken from that incredible day. My friend Kev Corbett, I just saw, said, "Remember this? Yeah. The, the rainstorm." I just remember this incredible feeling. It was it was completely overwhelming to walk out. I don't know how many thousand people there were there. It was Canada Day in Ottawa on the House of Parliament steps with this huge stage set up and this guitar that I remember asking you if I could get my hands on it the day before. And you said, ah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> because I wanted to mess with it. You know, I wanted to play it and see, because this tune, well, you can see the capo on there. This, you know, this tune is capoed way up. Um, <laughs> And uh, I just, I needed to play it. But basically, I think I got to mess around with it for a minute or two before I went out in front of 80,000 people. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, in my little howdy duty goes to hate Ashbury shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, Steve. Uh, good I, played, I played this song. So after I'm done this, we'll be done. Um, thanks, Joey. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much for sharing this story. It it moves me, and um, to all the people who uh, who were able to donate, you know, sacred things to this guitar, um, this living museum. Bless your hearts. Uh, I long may she run, and hopefully, if you're watching this, you can get your hands on the book, or you can you know find your way to this story because we have just barely scratched the surface. It's it's remarkable, and the detail that you have put into the website as well as the guitar itself, obviously, but the way you present it is remarkable and it, it deserves to be told over and over and over. So thanks. Thank thanks. You. Um, Thank you. Um, I owe you a, a beer when, when this is all over and I get my, my well, hair cut. And I'm um, cooking for you. I'm cooking for you. Okay. Well, there'll be a big <laughs> bottle of wine involved. So I'll, I'll play this song and thanks everybody for listening and uh, I'll, I'll play us out. This is the longest road. Mm -hmm. I'm standing at a window I'm pressed against the past I'm looking on in black and white Through the eyes of photographs And I'm falling into faces Cultivated smiles Two-dimensional Je me souviens Canada Out of gas town in the morning On a train in 69 Into the arc weld of the rising sun We left the coast behind And the wheels roll in a rhythm And I heard in them for the first time The endless song of traveling Out of Canada Oh, Canada the longest road I've known Paved with the kind of broken hearts That lead to broken homes Looking backwards, I remember The cracks in all the paving stones And the distances I've traveled Out of Canada dog days of the prairies the boundless sky above our heads and my stepfather looked for mounties in the streets of winnipeg he told them that my mother's love had stole his heart away 
And we all stood there posed for Polaroids of Canada. Oh, Canada. The longest road I've known. Paved with the kind of broken hearts that lead to broken homes. Looking backwards, I remember the cracks in all the pavement stones and the distances I've traveled out of Canada. I awoke wrapped in my mother's arms on the docks of Montreal. The ships lit like Christmas, and the moon is small and long. And when a sailor spoke of England, I'd never felt so small. And I waited until the ocean turned from emerald to gray And the wind threshed the water and washed our wake away And the seagulls blew like words back to the mouth of the St. Lawrence As we sailed out on the Empress of Canada Oh, Canada, the longest road I've known, paved with the kind of broken hearts that lead to broken homes. Looking backwards, I remember the cracks in all the paved stones and the distances I've traveled out of Canada. The first country of my youth My heart was ever drawn to you Like a tongue to a broken tooth In a world where everyone Was always a leader I was trying to keep my fingertips on Can I told you it was going to be That's a just lovely. <laughs> I told you. Oh, you're I'm, back. <laughs> I'm crying here. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge. Can, can we get the screen back for just a sec? Or are we done? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can. Jennifer can bring it. Hey, by the way, Jennifer Johnson. Yes. Thank, thank you so Jennifer. much. 
Jennifer brought this together. So thanks. Oh, there's Doug. Excellent. I want to thank Doug uh, for the amazing photos yeah. that I, a lot of people are responding to. Yeah, uh, they're awesome. They're awesome. Please do follow these cards on uh, on the Instagram uh, feed. Lots of lots to learn. Uh, everything is archived, along with a bunch of stories uh, and people who played it and little connected stories. Uh, and they they rotate through on a weekly basis. I'm about two thirds of the way through the project, so we'll see where that gets us and that all cross posts on Twitter as well. Uh, David Leesk uh, has written five songs inspired by pieces from the guitar and he's actually on the guitar and has recorded them on the guitar with Justin Avin and producing. So we're hopeful that that's going to come out soon when all this, uh, he's got a few more uh, dubs to do. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, and I did want to mention also that I am, uh, you know, I do do stuff in schools. Since we can't, uh, I have these modules prepared where I can do short uh, things for schools. Uh, and it involves puzzles and quizzes and uh, presentations on any number of subject subjects. You can divide the project up in so many different ways. Uh, so 10, 15, 20 minute units. Uh, so if there's teachers out there listening, get in touch. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'll give one more thanks to my friend Al Williams, who lovingly created that beautiful oh. case that, that, that the Voyageur travels all over the country in. Al's gone, but he would yeah. be chuckling away if he were around. He'd, he'd yeah. Be at, that and, and his wife, his television. partner, G uh, Trudy Graham, as well. But yeah. In fact, it was Al, uh, Al and Colton Canada built the case. And shout out to Colton in Austin now. Yeah, they've yeah. been very supportive. Uh, but uh, he and Trudy were the first people to modify the case. Uh, they sewed Don Cherry's pants into the lid. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Don Cherry's <laughs> pants. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that's it. Um, hey, seven minutes over the hour. This has been the most concise live stream that I've done because it wasn't just me ad-libbing the whole damn thing. It was actually <laughs> coordinated. So thanks, Joey. Thanks, Jennifer. Oh. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Um, yeah, please follow the story. It's it's uh, it's Thank camp. you all. Yeah. <laughs>